Hey, what's up, guys? And the reason I'm here today, we'll be talking about character vision skill. Because we, today we're going to talk about omic and non-omic component. But before that, we're actually going to talk about semiconductor. You know, because because semiconductor is really important just for you to understand omic and non-omic component. So now, people who are taking chemistry will immediately notice that what is semiconductor? Semiconductors all have four outer shell electrons, which means it's group four. And the most two most commonly used semiconductor in electricity is silicon and germanium. In this case, we talk about talking about silicon because it's even more commonly used than germanium. So silicon has four outer shell electrons. And what you notice is that in order to make it a stable atom, its outer shell electron number has to be eight. In this case, it can whether gain four or lose four. Okay, remember this important concept. That's why it's semi. And if we have another silicon atom next to it, so they met, they don't want to react, don't they? They want to react. What do you think this is going to happen? Pause the video for a second, think about it. Okay, now I'm going to tell you they will form a collated bond, which means that. They share their electrons. So basically, this is what, what's gonna happen. Look at this, guys. It's, it's, it's very sneaky, you know? So sneaky. Silicon. Silicon. A. Look at this. The red one represents the electron from that side, and the black one represents the electron from that silicon. This is what's happening, you know? What you will notice is that now they both have eight outer shell electron, isn't it? It's a covalent bond. And let's just share it. Actually, these electrons in the valence band, this is called the valence band, the covalent bond, you know, the valence band. These electrons in the valence band are, are, are not very stable. If there are some, I mean, outer factors like light and heat to trigger it, it's just gonna move around this is the very important concept i have to take this in, i have to take note you know this is called intrinsic excitation what this means is that the heat at light triggers the intrinsic semiconductors like silicon and germanium they're the electrons in the valence bond are moved around, are moved to the conduction band. This is the valence band. So let's say they get rid of one. And there's one free electron out there in the conduction band, which can be used to conduct electricity. Because this is free electron, just like all the metals, you know? Have to think smart, guy. Yeah, you, you have to think smart. But what you notice is that this electron is gone. And, and the, on the original position, there will be a seat, not a seat, just take it guys. There will be a seat that other free electrons can take it. 
and they sit like this is actual position, this actual free space. It's called the hole. Yes, I'm not kidding, guys. You can search it up. This is actually called the hole. You know, waiting for other electrons to fill up, and then this is called free electron. Electron in the conduction band is called free electron, and then the free space in the valence band is called the hole. That's and this has to be done under the condition of heat or light. This is called intrinsic excitation. No, no, no. intrinsic. My bad. No T. I'm so dumb. Yeah, like this intrinsic. Yeah, exactly. My bad. My bad. And have a think. What if we just have one semiconductor atom, like silicon, and you put it together with another atom from of the from the group three atom? What's gonna happen? Just just pause the video and have a think, okay? Now I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen. Any group three element will be fine. Group three elements, because group three has three outer shell electrons, and they will actually form a covalent bond as well, just like this. And then the electrons. From the silicon and the electrons from the group three element are shit, which means it becomes something like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you notice that there's actually one free space, which is the hole. There's a hole, the hole is actually a a hole can be used to conduct electricity as well. The things that can be used to conduct electricity is called a carrier. Well, most of the case, in most cases, the carrier is free electron because metals only have the free electron as the carrier. Carrier, there are only two types of carrier, free electrons. Or holes. In this case, it's the hole. And this type of compound is called P type semiconductor. Okay, guys, this is called a P type semiconductor. When you see blah blah type semiconductor, actually, there's only N and P. So, chew. It's not just semiconductor itself. It's a compound. It's a compound. This is very important, guys. Now, let's think about this. Silicon semiconductor with a group five element. What's gonna happen? Well, it becomes more interesting because group five elements have five outer shell electrons, and then silicon has four. Five and four, covalent bond they form to get together. They got one extra, don't they? They got one extra. What they can do with the extra um, electron is say, mm, we we don't want you to be in the valence bond. We want valence band. I mean, we want you to be in the conduction band. Don't disrupt us. We. Basically, this is what's going to happen. So, eight outer shell electron 
actually nine, but they kicked out one of the electrons into the conduction band, you know? So, whee, just like metal. Hmm? There's a free electron there. So, the carrier in this type of semiconductor, which is the n-type semiconductor, is the free electrons. But guys, have a think. Is that the only carrier a semiconductor has? Uh, no, because I can tell you. Due to intrinsic excitation, put another silicon there. These two will join have a covalent bond, and if there is a presence of heat and light, the intrinsic excitation will take will happen, which means that some of the electron will go out, and some of the holes will be formed. Just and then there's actually hole in n-type semiconductor as well. So p-type and n-type semiconductor both have two types of carriers. But, have a think guys. For n-type semiconductor, there will be a group 5 element providing that extra electron. And then, this extra electron is added into the free electron as well. Which means, it's free electron number is way bigger than the total number of the holes in n-type semiconductor which means that in n-type semiconductor free electrons are majority carriers and holes are minority carriers have to remember this guys this is this is very important and if you switch place, move back to group three, which is which becomes P type, there will not be that free electron anymore. Instead, there will be a hole waiting for electrons to fill. Again, this is this is actually called hole. I know it's a bit disgusting and sus, but it's just called hole. Now, because of um, intrinsic excitation, there were actually free electrons as well. But in this case, the free electron number in p-type semiconductor is way smaller than the number of holes because a group three element is providing that hole. You know, it's providing that hole, and then due to intrinsic excitation, there will be some hole generating as well. Actually, because actually this elect free electrons generated and the hole generated due to in intrinsic excitation are the same, the same, exactly equal. Yeah. And then in this case, in p-type semiconductor, the free electron is a minority carrier and the hole is a majority carrier. Guys, just, just open your mind and have a think. What if you put the n-type semiconductor and the p-type semiconductor together? Pause the video and have a think. Okay, I have my thinking. You notice this will be a structure like this. Correct? And then these side have a lot of free electrons. With some of the holes. Correct? That side has a lot of holes. The, 
guys, be aware, this is not charge. This is not charge, okay? This is carriers. And a minority number of um, free electrons. And what if they meet? There was some chemical reaction immediately happening when they meet. Just like when you mix lithium and fluorine, I'm sure you did that in year 10, especially with Peter Warren. And then these two want, this one wants to lose one extra electron to make it stable. This one wants to gain one because that's all the share of electron number is seven. That is nine. Nine minus one is eight. Seven plus one is eight. So let's do this, guys. They say let's do this. And then these lost one electron. These gains one electron. So it becomes something like this. There will be a part in the middle where they are stable. The outer shell electron number is stable. But guys, electrons can move, but protons can. Protons are like Ushiba. Electrons, you can move, but I can't. I become angry. Because this part, although its outer shell electron number is it's, it's stable, it becomes an ion, isn't it? Because it lost its organic electron already. It becomes ion. It has charge now. Because this part has lost electrons, its proton number is greater than the electron number. So this part is overall positive, it has positive charge. This time is the charge, you know? This is carrier, this is charge, but different things. Have to be aware of this. And then this section gain the electron, it also becomes ion. It's negatively charged because it's it's gained electrons, electron number is greater than the proton number. So overall, it's negatively charged. You see this? And then, if you listen from the last revision, if you notice this is like a battery. Do you see that? It is a battery, exactly. And then, this is the inner voltage, which is the electromotive force. It's the electromotive force, EMF. We were using conventional, using conventional current because of stupid Benjamin Franklin. Okay, positive charge flow to negative. Yep, has potential difference, and then. I'm going to tell you if the semiconductor used to make this structure, which is called a PN junction. PN junction is just a P type semiconductor connected with the N type semiconductor. This structure is called PN junction. If this PN junction is made up of silicon, this value is in between. 0.7 volts to 0.6 volts, but if it's made by germanium, it's 0.2 volts to 0.3 volts. A pretty small number, yeah. So basically, that's what happened. This is actually a structure of diode, I'm pretty sure. You have heard about diode before, especially Jack Bright. In the on the on the on the circuit diagram, diode is written like this: a triangle, vertical line, and a horizontal line. That's what the diode looks like. And if you notice. LED is actually a type of diode because LED is the abbreviation of light emitting diode, which means it's a type of diode as well. And what if I have light on it? 
Think about this, guys. You have light. Happening. Light heating the style. What you notice that it provides the energy of this stupid to this stupid diode, and then if you join it with a wire with a resistor as the load, it will actually be this part becomes. Positive. The positive end of the battery, this part becomes the. No, my bad, my bad, my bad. Because this is the EMF, it's con encountering, from, from last revision, you notice that it's encountering the electric field force that actuates the electrons to flow. So EMF and EFF are in opposite directions which means the um, EFF direction is this which drags the positive charges from there do you see the positive charges er, back to there and then these EMF, which is the junction voltage, the junction voltage, grab it back and then keeps looping like this. This is solar cell, guys. This is this is how solar cell works. Pretty smart, isn't it? Not very hot. And basically, that's how it works. And an important characteristics with diode. Is that it can only allow current to flow in a single direction because with a resistor no matter how it changes the direction of the current it is always able to flow through but with diode you can't because guys have a think about this have to think smart okay 